Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of, the, out of this book here ATI T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 125. We are dealing with the concept of ratios and proportions. Today is our second lesson in a series of three. Yesterday we did the first one. We're going to do problems that you see on page 79. These are not practice problems. On page number 79, on the very top of, on the very top of page 79, these are not practice problems. Just look at the very top of the page 79. Turn, turn to page, page 79 in your book and, turn to, and look at the very top of it where he talks about Timmy only likes blue and red candies that problem right there and we are told that he has a total of four hundred and twelve candies let me read it to you it says it says Timmy only likes blue and red candies on the top of page 79 in his bag containing 412 candies, he counts 57 red candies, 98 blue candies. And then the question now is, what are the ratios of, and we're being asked to find three ratios. We're being asked to find the ratios of red to blue, red to blue, well, which is very straightforward. We know how many red do we have, we have 57 red. So we have 57 red and how many blues do we have? We have 98 blues. That's it, we're done. The next initial ratio they're looking for is blue to red. Well, that's very straightforward. Once you know the ratio of red to blue, blue to red is just going to be the reciprocal. It's just going to be the inverse. Reciprocal means inverse. You just flip it. So ratios of red to blue is 57 to 98. The ratio of blue to red is going to be 98 to 57 because there are 98 blue candies and there are 57 red candies. That's what it is. And finally, they're asking us, what's the ratio of red to all? Red to all. How many red candies do we have? We have 57 red candies. And how many total candies do we have? We have 412 total. Let's say those are the three ratios they're looking for. What are the ratios of red to blue, blue to red, red to all? Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. The next problem is where they talk about, right underneath it, he talks about Mike manages a small crew of men at a local utility company. That problem right there. These are not practice problems. This is the top of the page there. That problem is also very straightforward. We are told in that problem, we are told that the chainsaw, we are on page 79 still. Ten chainsaws have two stroke engines. I don't know why they need this, why they see the need to tell you that. I don't know what you're going to do with that information, but that's how it is. Chainsaws usually do have two stroke engines, just like the leaf blower you have and many other. Uh, tools that one might use in the yard. My leaf blower is a change uh, a two stroke engines. It requires you to mix the oil with the gasoline. You have to mix it first before you pour it in as opposed to your car where you put the, put the gasoline at the gas station and you change the oil separately. It's a different mechanism. Here you have to mix the oil and the gasoline together before you put it in the machine. And they tell you that they require, they usually require, they require oil and gas, oil and gas in the ratio, not ratios, in the ratio of 1 to 50. 1 to 50 can be written as 1 to 50. That's another way of expressing a ratio. We can write it like this, we can write it like this, or we can have written it like this, 1 to 50 in the ratio of 1 to 50. 
These are three different ways of expressing the same ratio. This is spelled out in words 1 to 50 or 1 and then 1 and then 2 dots 1 to 50 or we can say 1 to 50. In other words for every one for well it's a ratio of oil to gasoline so let's talk about gasoline first because that's a bigger number what it says is that for every 15 ounce of gasoline that I will put not 15 rather 50 for every 50 ounce of gasoline that I put in the in the in the in the engine in my chainsaw I will have to put one ounce of oil that's the ratio 1 to 50 of course we can't speak in terms of gallons because you're not going to put gallons in the chainsaw that's how I speak that's why I speak in terms of ounces for every 50 ounce for every 50 parts of gasoline that you put in there has to be one part oil the question is how much oil should be mixed with five gallons how much how much oil should be mixed with five gallons and they go on I think in the book I think somewhere it tells you that five gallons should have oh no the question is, they tell you the five gallons requires 12.8 ounces of oil that's not the question how much oil should be mixed with one one gallon of how much oil should be mixed with one gallon of gasoline if five gallons require if five gallons require 12.8 ounces the five gallons require 12.8 ounces well we can simply set it up as a ratio gasoline and oil let's do it on the top gasoline and oil they tell us so this is this is measured you must have your units straight you must keep track of your units Ga gasoline is measured into the gallon and oil is going to be measured in terms of ounces they are not the same units and we are told that if you were to put five gallons of gasoline that would require 12.8 ounces where do we get this information it is given in the problem the problem tells us that the five gallons would require 12.8 ounces of oil the question is how much oil do I need to put in today in my chainsaw it's a very small job I'm only going to use one gallon of gasoline how much oil should I mix with that one gallon typically I have a five gallon container that I fill up at the gas station and that in that five gallon container I know I have to put 12.8 ounces of oil and that, that's what I usually do but today I only have one gallon one gallon container because it's a small job I only need one gallon of gasoline obviously I'm not going to put 12.8 ounces of oil in it it will be too rich it won't burn it won't burn properly question is how much do I need to put in that's the question how much for a one gallon of gasoline what do I need to put in here that's the question mark that's our unknown and that's a one let's do it together cross multiply 5 times x is going to be 5x and 12.8 times 1 is just going to be 12.8 divide both sides by 5 and we are done if you divide both sides by 5 we are done 5 is going to cancel out and x equals 12.8 over 5 now instead of trying to divide 12.8 by 5 if you want to make your life easier there is a trick you can play and the trick is the trick is to convert your 5 into a 10 some multiple of 10 how can you convert your 5 into a 10 well, multiply top and bottom by 2 multiply top and bottom by 2 and you'll see what will happen if you were to do that 12.8 times 2 12.8 times 2 let's do it out here 128 times 2 8 times 2 is 16 6 carry 1 4 5 carry so it's 2 point 2 point 12.8 times 2 is 2.56 and what do you get in the bottom we get 5 times 2 which is 10 so it turns out that x the unknown quantity is no it should, shouldn't be 2.56 it should have been 25.6 the decimal was here it should be 25.6 25.6 I made a mistake 
because decimal is after the first 12 points. And obviously it's got to be 25 because we already know that 12 times 2 is 20, we already know that 12 times 2 is 24. Then how the bloody hell can 12.8 times 2 be 2.56? It has to be 25.6. So 25.6 over 10. And now it's very easy. When you have to divide this number by 10, you just have to take the decimal and move it one more space. And it turns out that the answer is 2.56 ounces. 2.56 ounces. Now listen very carefully what I have to say next. In the first 23 days, the series, the, the T is 6 series, listen very, very carefully. The T is 6 series begins with day 101. Day 101 through day 123, you will see me holding this book. They published this new book, the gray book here, because the red one apparently contained too many errors. And they, I need my both hands to fix my, uh, to finish my sentence. They fixed all the errors and they published this book. It's the same book, same edition, supposedly without error. I was going to say so error, without the error. Unfortunately, alas, the answer that they give you in the book is wrong. It is not, the book says, book is wrong. How do you spell wrong? I can't spell wrong. W-R-O-N-G. The book says 2.6 ounces. It is wrong. It is not 2.6 ounces. It's 2.56 ounces. 2.6 ounces would have been correct answer if somewhere in the problem they told you to give the answers to the nearest tenth. Because they do not say give the answers to the nearest tenth anywhere in the problem, we cannot give it, we cannot round it to the nearest tenth. The correct answer, the precise answer is 25.6 divided by 10, which is 2.56 ounces, not 2.6 ounces. I think this is it. I'm not going to make a third one. This is it. This is the end of it. We're just going to have two. And we're going to start a new topic tomorrow on something else. If you wish to work with me individually, one-to-one, -one, if, you, if you're looking for a tutor and if you'd like to hire my services, you can reach me at this phone number, 1-800-808-PREP. There's my email address, prepsat at aol.com. We'll work one-to-one, -one, as I said, individual tutoring, one-to-one -one tutoring on Skype. My rate as of right now is $40 an hour. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.